Love is not consolation, it is light. The best weapon against an enemy is another enemy. Fear is the mother of morality. To desire to annoy no one, to harm no one, can equally be the sign of a just as of an anxious disposition. Love is not consolation, it is light. The best weapon against an enemy is another enemy. Fear is the mother of morality. It's just some uh, Nietzsche quotes, but this is uh, going to stem into the education uh, process, which we can actually, um, you know, one that actually educates and makes people stronger instead of sort of abiding by the mediocre. Whoever does not have a good father should procure one. One has to pay dearly for immortality. One has to die several times while one is still alive. In every real man, a child is hidden that wants to play. Character is determined more by the lack of certain experiences than by those one has had. Convictions are more dangerous foes of truth than lies, which is a, a fascinating one. This goes to the Nietzsche idea of uh, reevaluating morality. I like that I got a strong moral core, uh, but there are some interesting quotes that he says here that makes me wonder, you know. the um, He says, convictions are more dangerous foes of truth than lies. And I just read this uh, one article about progressives need to stand up for their convictions. And now, I think convictions are good things, especially like, you know, the golden rule, doing to others. This is just logical truths. And um, you can't really get past the logic of the thing. There cannot be a God because if there were one, I could not believe that I was not he. What do you regard as most humane to spare someone's shame? Uh, whoever has witnessed another's ideal becomes his inexorable judge and as it were his evil conscience. Blessed are the forgetful for they get the better even of their blunders. So, Nietzsche, right? Um, at no point in the American education system in the political science sphere nor in the... Um, you know, in the school of education teacher training, frankly, I see the curtain behind eyes and it's all about compliance, 100% compliance. Just shut up and do as you're told. So I wrote these guiding principles from 11 alternative education models for a postmodern revolutionary school. And this becomes the basis for where I came up with Freedom School. So the Freedom School is a school that is, you know, that it's alternative, right? So it's different than the public education and the type of just shut up and sit and get. Shut up, sit down, sit and get. The, all they're doing is being manipulated for the rest of their lives. And while I like the Sudbury model schools, I think there is a certain, um, I don't want to say irresponsibility, because I, I, I would err in their direction. And the idea of Sudbury schools is that you have complete freedom to do as you want. You come to school as long as you put in eight hours a day, but that's a requirement, right? You have to be there for eight hours a day. Um, but the, um, and so the, the idea is if you try to seduce somebody and giving them a little bit of freedom, and they'll think that that's real freedom, then they'll be manipulated for the rest of their lives. So he says that some schools that provide the little bit of freedom actually doesn't really care about the person because they have to manipulate them. So I actually have condensed these, um, and I think I've condensed them pretty well. Because there are, there are some schools that I really enjoy. Um, at the very basic level, we do need to have you know a vibrant discussion about what's right, what's wrong, and what what's the point to life. And I think when you have that discussion, when you have you know a democracy, we will be democratic. You will care about yourself, stand up for yourself, be strong, and uh, go after what you want. These are things that have never been told to me. Shut up, sit down, right? Do as you're told. Well, you don't really give a fuck about me, do you? You're fucking just trying to prescribe your fucking knowledge on me so you don't actually give a shit about me. So I want to go through each one of these, actually, the 11 different schools that I have. That way I can uh, get to, you know, um, this is just what I'm about. This is a, sort of the culmination of my work. And, um, you know, it, it, school teachers are bullies. That's all they give a shit about is their own power. Since they care about 100% compliance, it's fascist totalitarianism. That's dictatorship. And you want to know why we have low voter, voter turnout rates? The, uh, the teachers aren't actually educating us. They're not actually teaching us anything. They schools ain't teaching us what we need to survive. You know, that's dead prez. And so that's the... Um, uh, that's that's the point for what it is that I'm going to talk about. And then I, I'm going to talk about all these schools and then I'm going to synth synthesize them all together because whereas I like the Sudbury model schools of just complete freedom, um, and I'm not going to say it's irresponsible. Like I said, I err in their direction. My my point is I just think that the school has to have like some type of flavor, some sort of, 
I just feel like you can get relationships to build. You can build it around scientific progress and logic and freedom. You can, you know, foster a good um, learning community, a good learning, you know, um, you know, a learning community. So, vocation. Um, I start out with the uh, the guiding principles as a learning pyramid, and actually, the learning pyramid is the um, the picture that I use here. And so, let's check out the learning pyramid. The learning is um, essentially, you know, the uh, teachers that taught me this. They just told me this, and then they didn't fucking give a shit about what the the learning pyramid actually was about. Oh, I know more about the learning pyramid than you. Someone asked me, Deborah Stinson. She says, um, "So, what does the learning pyramid?" You know, what, what, what's the best way to get people to retain their knowledge? And of course, you know, I said 90, 95%. She goes, no, 90%. <laughs> I was right. I said 90 to 90%. So the learning pyramid, the very top is lecture. That's all they're doing. You only retain 5% of a lecture. You only retain 10% of reading. You only retain 20% of audio visual. You retain 30% of demonstration. So if you do a PowerPoint or whatever, um, any type of demonstration, you know, you get, you retain 30%, 50%. What I need, what we need to do so right off the bat, right off the bat, what we need to do is to do the things that are on the bottom. So experiences. So at the Freedom School, I could see that there would be a lot of experiences that would happen. That's the vocation is going to be the next school that I talk about. So being able to build a car, being able to weld, being able to build a house, being able to conduct science experiments and being able to, you know, get along with each other. All these things are incredible ideas. These are revolutionary ideas. America doesn't believe in freedom. Americans are immoral bastards because they are obedient to authority. They don't give a shit um, about strong smart moral people those are the people that are the mover and shakers of the world and so if we actually want to progress as a society we have to employ a different you know that what is that the idea of insanity to do the same thing over and over again and expecting different results then no we got to do something completely different and so i probably have to just establish the freedom school on my own um, but it's just an absolutely incredible idea. So we, we focus on the bottom three things. We have discussions. When one person says one thing, someone else says something, you got to, you know, rectify that. There's a new reality that you have to deal with. Practice doing actual experiences, actually getting out there and doing the thing. So you get out there, like I said, welding, computer repair, building websites. You actually do the thing, you know, edit videos, um, there's just so many things that people can do, you know, uh, botany and biological research and um, Einstein and scientific progress and mathematics, right? And then once they get, you know, what uh, um, my Freedom School idea is to have uh, dream classes, okay? So whereas you have, you know, I, I believe there will be a basis sort of uh, like the Great Books program. So that way we're actually starting from somewhere. It's not just like, all right, kid, run around and we'll watch it. No, that's not it, because you're watching them. You're part of the thing. So I feel like if you're a part of the thing, then the point for the adults is to, uh, um, you know, get their curiosity peaked so they'll want to do the stuff. And if they don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. They can just, you know, do something else. But this would be a way to actually sort of uh, measure progress and uh, being in some sort of structured environment. So I believe in... Um, you know, anarchy. I believe in uh, people govern their own ways and then us uh, as humans de de deciding how we want to organize ourselves. And so experience, there is no better education than experience. That's Albert Einstein. That's everybody. I mean, frankly, that just makes sense. I, I always wanted to have to be a hands-on learner. Oh, yeah, okay, you're real unique. Not really. You want someone to baby you through it, but that's okay. That's okay. You want to learn about um, cars? We will find a mechanic so you can learn about cars. You want to learn about, um, you know, you, you want to learn about the Higgs boson? We will find scientists for you to learn about the Higgs boson. You want to learn about the Native Americans? We will find anthropologists that will show the things that they've learned through, um, you know, their Native American experiences. This is genius. This is so smart, and this is what we need to do. And this is the direction that education should be going. Uh, schooling interferes with education. Again, Mark Twain, um, Albert Einstein, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants here, okay? There's brilliant people that I have come before me and have thought about all these things. And, you know, the, the current education system, that's the reason why we have the problems that we have. The corporations have completely taken over. The Republicans are more radical than all the other groups. And, um, you know, before them, Dwight D. Eisenhower said that they would be laughed out of the political establishment. Uh, Ronald Reagan raised taxes. So the Republicans that we got today are totally fucking just selling 
um, you know, America off and they're totally into financial speculation and we're losing our manufacturing base, whereas Germany has the highest export rates and they're doing capitalism and socialism better than us. They get a better wage, they get paid higher, so they're doing so much better. And so the learning pyramid, and then the very last thing is to teach others, right? When you teach others, that is when you retain the most information. So the only people that's actually learning in schools are the teachers. That's the only people learning anything. They compile their notes. They say, I'm so smart. I'm so smart. Now repeat what the fuck I just told you. Okay, teacher, you said this. And then that's just, that's knowledge. That's learning. So, you know, you, you believe the fucking teacher. You trust in them. And then when you go around and you say, hey, well, my teacher says, you know, this. Well, that's stupid. Shut up. And then it's like, well, fuck. You know, your the education is like, Almost as if like the school is separate from the reality. School pulls you out of the reality of the real world. And then they try to say, learn this, learn this, learn this. There was a homeless kid that actually got killed um, in, um, you know, in Louisville. He was like, you know, 10 years old or so. He's in middle school. And so the homeless kid, he's, you know, 10 years old. And he goes in there and learns the stupid shit the teachers told him about. And then he walks away and he's fucking homeless. So this to me just says that the schools need to be more... Um, centers of the community. So if they're not being in the center of the community and actually helping the community, what the fuck are they doing? They think that by, you know, preaching at people and that's how you're actually going to learn shit, you're not going to learn anything like that. So discussion, practice doing, teaching others, that's where education needs to lean towards. I also got Maslow's hierarchy and then I got the, uh, the power uh, circles. So the power circles actually comes from the Women's Crisis Center and it talks about equality. And equality is exactly where we need to go with this. This is exactly where we need to go with this. So equality is, um, you know, doing to others as you have them do unto you. I think equality for equality's sake isn't good, but an equal um, distribution of opportunities. You know, everybody, uh, you know, in my world, you, if you, you should not die. You should not die, right? So you should be allowed to live in America, the richest country in the world. And if you want to go above and beyond it, then you get your ambition and you say, let's go do this. And so Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this is another thing that Amer uh, American schools are completely ignoring. American schools do not give a shit about the needs of the people. You know, the entire point of the people is to sort of, you know, just manipulate them and tell them what to do and all this other bullshit. They don't give a shit. They don't care. And because they don't care and all they care about is their own power and their own paycheck, they're not teaching anything. You know, the, instead of actually teaching anything real, they teach a bunch of fake shit. You know, there's uh, there's so many teachers, but just go to, um, you know, the Valley High School. They sitting there. She wasn't a part of the union. She didn't know what the Gilded Age was. She's defending the bankers. You want to know why, you know, the Americans aren't giving a shit about their politics because the education system has failed. Why is there homelessness? Why is there pollution? Why is all the, you know, uh, why is there lack of democracy, low voter turnout rates? Why is there child abuse? Why is there war? Why is there police brutality? The education system fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. They're not actually teaching a goddamn thing. They're not teaching real experiences. They're not teaching the teacher, the students to teach others. When the, and that's brilliant. That's so smart. Could you imagine being in a class, you know, traditional class, and you're teaching U.S. history, and in that class, you're able to get the students to teach each other. And I read this one book that says, don't blame your parents. And the uh, point of that book was that your peers influence you more than any authority figures. So don't blame your parents. Don't blame your parents because the... Um, um, the, your peers are the ones that actually influence you. And so if you can get the peers teaching each other, if you can get the peers teaching each other, you know, about uh, uh, U.S. history, and you can see, you know, you're watching, observing, you can see that they're talking to each other, a good relationship is being developed, that is positive, that is good. And so p progressive and positive, those are good things to live by, right? To get, make sure the person's strong, make sure they stand up for themselves, and make sure they do you know, what they believe to be right, to have supermen and superwomen, like Nietzsche says. And there is a will to power, and so actually I've been meeting to actually take a look at William Glasser, because William Glasser, admit, you know, acknowledges the will to power, but you have to be able to say no. You have to learn how to say no, because if you just do whatever the hell anybody tells you what to do, you'll be off into the side in a ditch, feeling poor and impoverished, and you don't know why. You won't know why all that shit is happening. So, um, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this just kind of points out sort of what we need in order to survive. So if we have homeless kids that's going into the school system, they don't have, they cannot actualize, they cannot learn anything because they got to worry about food and their safety and love and belonging and safety and their physiological needs. 
So if they're not learning the physiological needs, if they don't have safety, love, and belonging, and self-esteem, they will never become self-actualized. And when you become self-actualized, that is when you become who it is that you were, you know, meant to become, or whoever it is you want to become. You know, that's um, and that's that's beautiful. That's where we need to go. But that kid, that homeless kid, that you know, Julie Chancellor didn't give a shit about that homeless kid. You had none of the fucking teachers that gave a shit about the homeless kids. Fucking Spalding University and University of Cumberlands, they don't give a shit. All they give a fuck about is their own power. Shut up, do as I tell you, because I'm the fucking mass. I'm the fucking boss. Well, that's going to teach the kids to always be slaves. And nobody ever gets freedom by being a slave. You pick the cotton faster, you think you're going to fucking stand up? No, you're not going to get any fucking better. You're not going to get any faster. So, um, Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. This is what we need in order for learning to actually happen. If we don't have these basic things, learning does not happen. So, you know, you combine that with the learning pyramid. So, once you have... Food, water, clothing, safety, love, and belonging, and self-esteem. Then you can say, "Well, I would like to learn this thing. I would like to learn this thing." It's, I mean, how you sit there and tell the kid what to do. You make them raise their hand to go to the bathroom, and then you expect them to make life decisions as soon as they get out. You didn't teach them how to be independent. You didn't teach them how to, you know, stand up for themselves whatsoever. Fucking ever. All you do is said, "Shut up and sit down and do as the fuck as you're told." You didn't give a shit. So spontaneity, problem solving, lack of prejudice, acceptance of facts. There's also democratic structures, right? The be able to um, give an argument, to tolerate other opinions. The majority get their way, but the minority get their say. So that's you know these are things that should be incorporated in a in a freedom and democracy, love and culture. We don't. There is no democracy that we don't like freedom. We say shut up to anybody that you know just do as you're told. A cop tells you to fucking stop, you're just supposed to stop. A cop puts their hands on you, you're just supposed to willingly submit, and then they get a fuck over your life, right? Well, that's bullshit. They're assaulting you. That's a fucking criminal. And especially if they have no fucking reason to do so. But the state has a higher, you know, the state has the monopoly of violence. And so, oh, that's just acceptable. It's a Nazi culture. It's a Nazi fascist totalitarian culture. The parents who beat their kids love the fucking schools who are sitting there telling them to shut up. They work with each other. They work in tandem with each other. The corporations, they want, you know, you can be smart and intelligent, but don't ever fucking, you know, give up your own ideas. No, no, that's better. Actually, if you have like a, a small, you know, circle of people that's given ideas, so that way you can see what the best ideas are. When you can get around with people that can knock your ideas down that you respect. Right? If you're just a bunch of assholes and you're just being contrarian, nothing, nobody learns anything from that. And so instead of having sort of, you know, appeal to Massa and all these Uncle Toms and shit, you can have real people, real people who believe in independence, believe in freedom, believe, have a, you know, um, believe in themselves. So you got super women, super men who are, you know, having real conversations instead of just being dominated over or just being, you know, manipulated and exploited and um, having to... Um, accept the oppression as if it's just something that we're, we're all supposed to do. So the um, that's that's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Then we have the equality wheels. And the uh, equality and power wheels, this is just talks about relationships. This is how relationships are supposed to work. So it almost seems like if you're not, you know, um, I just see this in my own personal life. So, you know, if the... the my, I guess my parents or whatever, the, uh, but I see it in a lot of fucking circumstances, and the idea is if you fucking tell the woman what to do, and you fucking put press on her, and press on her, and press on her, and tell her what to do, press on her, press on her, then you'll keep her, right? I even heard a lesbian say that. No, no, you always got to be on them. You must always be on them. Always. Always be on them. And that's, that's what they fucking think is to be right and true. And so if you are respectful of them, then it's like they don't, you know, even Beyonce said something like that. She says that if uh, Jay-Z was just a pushover, that she wouldn't respect him. And so he's got to fucking be the man and being in control and have power. But I, I don't, you know, I, I think Beyonce has like some issues from childhood or whatever where she's coming out of that. And so there's, um, if we want true freedom, I think that you'll be liberated if you actually start to respect other people. It's not just, you know, the, the one person has the power and the other person has no power. But this is exactly what we're seeing in the school system. Right? And the school system is mostly white women. Mostly white women. All they had to do was say, hey, that black man whistled at me, and then they get fucking lynched. They're on top of society. And since it's so socially unacceptable, right, to, to hit them, but men, you can beat the shit out of them. Nobody gives a fuck. Send them off to war, let them die, let the cops fucking throw them in prison. Who gives a shit? Fuck them. No, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. Women are just as capable of being bullies as the men are. And so that's why power and uh, the equality wheels, power and control and the equality wheels, 
are incredible um, tools that we can learn to be better people with each other. And essentially, it just shows what equality looks like, and it shows what power and control looks like. So equality looks like non-threatening behavior, sexual safety, trust and support, connections with others, honesty and accountability, responsible parenting, negotiation and fairness, financial and economic independence. That is what equality looks like. Okay, so if we don't have equality, then what we get is we get power and control. We get blaming and denying, making light of the abuse, saying that you cause it or you like it, saying he loves you after hurting you, saying it's all your fault and you deserve it. Economic, taking your money away from you for him or herself, preventing you from getting or keeping a job or going to school. Physical, pushing, shoving, being held down, biting, kicking, uh, slapping, punching, choking, hair pulling, being thrown against the wall or on the ground, being stabbed or shot, being tied up, having... Something thrown at you, being kept from food, water, sleep, etc. Yelling at you, calling you names, making you feel worthless, making you feel crazy, telling you you're stupid, embarrassing you in front of others, making you feel bad about yourself. Um, it's emotional abuse. Isolation, not letting you go out to see friends or family, not being able to talk to others of the opposite sex, disapproving of all your friends. That's That would be the woman that I have dated. No, you can't talk to anybody. No, don't talk to her. No, no, I know what this is about. And so it goes. equality goes both ways. It goes both ways. So for one people to say, I get all the power and you don't, well, that's bullshit. Equality says that there's fairness negotiation. And I think sometimes people, there's a fear of freedom. It's a fear of freedom. And so instead of just, uh, you know, having their own hobbies and doing their own thing, it's almost as if like, hey, you need to tell me what to do so that way I know what's going on. No, you need to learn how to make your own decisions and your own choices. Well, you need to handle me. No, no, I don't need to handle you. You don't handle me. I don't handle you. Equality. Threats. Controlling. Sexual. So um, having your sexual past insulted, being called um, bad sexual names, having bad things said about your body, being forced to do something sexual you don't want to do, being forced to have sex without birth control or safe sex, forced into prostitution or pornography, expects you to spend all your time with him or her, tells you how to dress, calls you or pages you to keep track of you, treats you like a servant. Yeah, I, I see lots of men doing that. Hey, where you at? Where you at, right? Because if you're not telling her what to do and controlling her, then it's like somebody else will tell her what to do and control and then she's fucking somebody else. Right, and so there's a lack of trust, there's a lack of respect, and I think the love and the trust and the respect should go both ways. So that's um, this is a beautiful society, this is a beautiful culture that we're creating here, where we actually respect one another and not just say, well, that person, you know, I always I see this like men do this shit all the time, right? If they say if you try to get a man to arbitrate a dispute between a man and woman, they'll always appoint to the man. Well, what are you doing, you son of a bitch? Well, I'm being nice and respectful, you know, um, and I'm getting trampled over. I care about her. I genuinely love her. I love her deeply. I love her immensely. I empathize with her. I look at life through her eyes. I see what is best for her, and I try to, you know, count to her and love her and support her to get her to where she wants to go. I just don't feel the, you know, I'm getting that back, and so it's crazy. So, like, you know, we'll say my mother again, because, like, if she sits there by her example that says, you know, you get your um, you kiss your man's ass, you always keep your man, and so therefore, if you have a man who's always on top of you, like the lesbian, Ty from um, West, uh, West, West Louisville's told me, she, you, you always must be on your woman, that's a woman telling me this, okay, so if a woman is sitting there saying, if you want to keep your woman, you always got to stand over and tell her what to do, well, that's, that's manipulative and controlling, and you're basically killing who they actually are, and, um, and so I believe it's going to be a beautiful society. I believe you'll get stronger, more beautiful men. You'll also get stronger and more beautiful women. So this is what my goal is, to get to the promised land, to have a society where we respect each other and care for one another and, um, and you know, get people to where they want to go, to, for people to talk about their dreams and to help them get to where they want to go. So that's what the dream classes are all about. You want to be an astronaut? At the Freedom School, we will get you an astronaut school. We will get a, we will design a program. We will have advisors or teachers, um, which we'll call advisors. You know, we will get them to design a program for you to be able to go to that you'll be able to work with. You'll design your own program together with your advisor, and then you'll actually achieve the things that you said that you wanted to achieve. You know, um, and and so you know, whereas you're limited in some of the resources. Well, I want to be an astronaut. Well, you know, there's there's no astronaut type, you know, um, supplies and space shuttles at the school. Well, you can learn about it. You can get, um, you know, um, understand it as much as you can. But you can also find out where the space shuttle programs are, where NASA works, and be able to apply for those types of jobs and those types of positions. And also, 
you know, there's a, especially black folks or black boys are being, you know, penalized because they're just being boys. You know, so white women don't understand this. They just shut up, sit down, boy, right? Um, do as you're told, do what your master tells you. So the black boys are having to shut up, sit down, and do as they're told, and they're being criminalized just because they're being themselves. And that's not right. That's not fair. So if they had these dreams to be an astronaut and you go to public school and you try to, you know, you can't sit still because the oppression is making you look like you got ADHD. Well, if that's the case, then you will, you know, um, eventually get suspended or detention or you'll get shamed and treated like shit. And even Nietzsche says that's like the worst punishment you can do if you want to spare somebody um, of, you know, sh uh, the, the best thing you can do is spare them of shame. But that's how, uh, because teachers can't hit you and they still want 100% compliance, they get you in a routine, do this, do that, shut up, sit down, I'm going to call ISAP, I'm going to call, put you in, in school suspension, I'm going to call your abusive parent, I'm going to do whatever the fuck I can to make sure you shut the fuck up and you sit the fuck down and you do as the fuck as I say. And if you don't like how I said all that, that's the same fucking, you know, reaction that a human should have. No, you're not going to just tell me what to fucking do. You don't give a shit about me. You just want to manipulate me so you can put your fucking thoughts into my fucking brain and pretend like that's learning. It's not learning. You only retain 5% of that. 5% of a lecture is all you retain. And that's all education is. College, uh, postgraduate, you know, all this, it's all it is. And frankly, if you want people, the idea of if you want to get them to ride the bike, you, you know, you teach them how to ride a bike, you show them an example, you get on it, you show them how it works, and then you, you know, you kind of guide them, you let them get on it, you let them try, maybe fall a couple times, and then eventually they'll do it. And then you step back. That's a good teacher. That's a good teacher because you taught the talent, you taught the skill, and you step back. And now they can, you know, ride the bike wherever they want to ride and do whatever they want to do with riding the bike skills. Now that's just uh, using as an example. So if you, it's not just teaching how to ride a bike, teaching how to read, teaching how to be an astronaut, teach them how to be a scientist, how to be an engineer, how to be a lawyer, how to be a doctor. You want good doctors? Well, you know, t stop telling them just sit and get. They actually need to know their shit. They need to know their stuff. And if all they're doing is just learning the book knowledge, they're just, they're going to learn on the job. That's when they'll actually get the fucking education. And so that's just bullshit. That's just, you know, and that's, um, it's bullshit because you have to go through all this fucking school and it says, hey, you know this shit. Well, you know the ideas, you know, and you only know the ideas sort of loosely, right? You only retain 5% of it. You can read the notes and copy the notes and rewrite them and think about them and rewrite them again and try to do your own thing so that way you can actually learn the shit. But all you're doing is just regurgitating the shit that they fucking told you. So, you know, what about advances in modern medicine? Does that come up? What if the teacher is biased? What if they say, well, hell, you know, you're just supposed to, I don't know, there was some dumb shit they used to do in the back in the day. But the, um, you know, if they just said, well, this is the medication, Ronnie Lee Smith, they would not let him get his medicinal marijuana when he was about to die because it was, you know, that was against their fucking policies. He had a medical marijuana card and it kept his uh, cancer in check. But nobody gave a shit. Nobody gave a fuck. Nah, fuck, it's illegal. We're going to let you die instead of actually giving you the medicine that you need. And that's exactly, that's that's a great fucking example. This whole fucking society is upside down. The whole society doesn't make any fucking sense. Shut your mouth. Do as you're fucking told. Get, boy, get in line, girl. Get in line. Do as you're told. And if you're used to, you know, um, being obedient, is that going to get you anywhere? I, I've never seen my obedience to anybody get me anywhere. Frankly, it just gets disrespect, and that's the exact level which injustice can be put upon you. It's Frederick Douglass. The, um, when you find out what people will quietly submit to, that is the level of injustice that they will allow to happen upon them. And so when you teach the, the, the students, the kids, the college students, anybody, any of these Americans in any of these educational institutions to shut up, sit down, to do as they're told, they will accept all the bullshit. They'll accept the Patriot Act. They'll accept the war. They'll accept the spying, the NSA programs. They'll accept, you know, just go on and on. Kentucky is like one of the poorest states, but there's a whole, there's just an avalanche of problems that Kentucky actually has. You know, there's toothlessness. There's um, uh, uh, just health problems, cancer problems, brain problems. And nobody's seriously addressing any of these issues. These issues are being skirted. They're being pushed off to the side. And so this is the school, the Freedom School, which actually comes from black schools because they wanted to black people to get an education, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. That is what we. That is the direction that we need to go. So equality. We don't want power and control, domination over other people. We want equality, non-threatening behavior, trust and support, connection with others, honest, uh, honesty, accountability, responsible parenting, non-violent. Financial, economic independence, negotiation, and fairness. 
sexual safety. So financial and economic independence, I think, is actually one of the best fucking things out there. So that's, uh, you know, when you are talking to the student, you go, you come to the freedom school. We won't just, you know, let you do whatever you want to do. You will get that. You will get freedom to study the things you want to study. But we also want to see you do well in life. So we will make those connections. You know, you will, you know, like the astronaut idea. You want to be an astronaut? Well, you got to go to NASA to be able to do that. You got to be able to write a grant. You got to be able to learn how to do these things. If you can't do these things, then you'll never actually learn. You'll never actually get to the position that you want. You'll sit there and do all this other stupid shit and you'll never get your goal. And so, you know, just study more, or go to school, you'll be, no, 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 there's, there's two parts to it. Yeah, you do need to know the knowledge, but you also need to see if the position is available. So shit, go to fucking 10 years of astronaut school and then find out that NASA, all the programs have been cut. What would be the fucking point? You just wasted 10 fucking years of your life because of, you know, the schools, they just want your fucking money and compliance and obedience. They don't give a shit about you actually getting a fucking job. So there needs to be that connection. You know, there needs to be support and they need to be able to push you into the, you know, direction that you need to go to. So that's just the guiding principles of where we want to go. Okay. And so I've been able to sort of synthesize this down to sort of how I want it to go. Um, but let, let's keep on going. So vocation, you actually learn trade schools, um, usable trans, useful transferable skills. So you can actually, you know, get a job and become financially independent. If you don't get a usable, transferable skills, what the fuck are you doing, right? Um, you can even uh, take AP tests to test see if they're good enough for traditional schools. IQ tests can be administered. So that would be like, um, you know, in, in say for grade school at this freedom school, you want your kid to know all about U.S. history. The way that the curriculum for U.S. history would go would be the, the advisor and the student sits down and they come up with a plot of how they want to learn U.S. history. Well, you know, you start, what, 1492, maybe 1776, and then you'll learn about as much information as you can. You actually get these AP tests. You practice these AP tests. And then eventually, once the AP test comes down, if you want to be a lawyer, you got to take LSAT, you know, uh, test. So you practice the LSAT test and you see that they get better and better. That is smart. That is smart. Instead of just saying, well, listen to me, I'm so fucking wise and blah, blah, blah. You know, if you want to be a professor, you got to sit there and get articles published. You know, you got to be able to be somebody. You got to be able to say to somebody that you've done something, right? And so you got to get these articles published. And therefore, that's how you will become a professor. So you need people that actually truly care, that genuinely care, that genuinely give a shit about you, that isn't just manipulating you and fucking forcing you in a damn box and um, just because they only want their fucking power. So vocation schools, I mean, there's lots of different vocation schools, uh, but vocation schools is like welding and computer repair. And actually, these are really good jobs, plumbing, electric work, um, uh, learning how to drive, you know, a tractor, learning a construction, how to operate equipment. Um, and that's, you know, that's where we need to be focused on. We need to be focused on our manufacturing base and exports. That's a good GDP is when you can make stuff and then you can sell the stuff to be made and therefore you get somewhere in life. I'm going to check out... Um, Black schools, black schools, they understood that when they were being educated that the white society was against them and therefore they had to get the best and the brightest elevated so that way they can get out of their rut. They had to make them strong. They had to be intimately, um, they had to know their family. They had to know their family very intimately. So they had to go to their house, go to the people, see who, you know, this child is and learn and talk about them, encourage them, tell them what their skills are, what they are good at, what they can do, what they can't do, you know, sort of uh, be able to put that into a framework. And, um, and then, you know, uh, have a, a discussion because, frankly, it's up to the parents and the students how their education goes. It's not up to the teachers, but that's the exact opposite. The curriculum is being handed down by the state, being imposed upon the teachers. The teachers are imposing upon the students, and we're all supposed to say that this shit's fucking education. It's not education. You know, Kentucky has a really bad literacy problem. Two out of five Kentuckians have less than a kindergarten education. So that's adults. Adults can't even fucking read. So this is the Internet fucking society. How are you supposed to get anywhere you know, without um, without being able to to stand up for yourself, or without um, uh, being able to read, and that's actually uh, Frederick Douglass says once he learned how to read, that's when he became free. They uh, they uh, the um, massa's wife was sitting there telling him, you know, um, uh, telling her not to teach Frederick Douglass how to read, and then that's when he knew, oh shit, there's something to this reading business, right? And so black schools, right? Here's a couple pictures of black schools and uh, churches and whatnot, but that's um. It looks traditional, and they do more with less. But still, the point is, is that you need to get these students elevated. It's not the most obedient that are supposed to fucking excel. Be the most, you know, talented, the smartest ones. 
And if you have mediocre fucking teachers that's jealous of anybody who might display any type of smarts. I remember asking um, Sharon Parker about um, molecules. What's the difference between an atom and a molecule? And she goes, I don't know what it is. <laughs> and she just totally dismissed my question. She didn't give a shit. She didn't give a shit about edu educating me. I wanted to know what the fuck the difference was because she was using them interchangeably. There is a difference. And actually, let's learn Let's learn it now. <laughs> molecule, atom. And so this, this would be for Sharon Parker, okay? I also remember a teacher saying, hey, what is the First Amendment to the Constitution? Freedom of speech. No. Wow, so you're a dictator who's sitting there commanding 100% compliance, and we ain't learning nothing. We're not learning nothing. And so, you know, the, you're, you're lying. If we're supposed to trust you 100% and you lie, what the fuck? You're sitting there teaching bad knowledge. You're teaching disinformation. And you're pretending disinformation is real fucking schooling? So the black schools, because they knew that society was against them, they would actually care about the individual and get them to where they need to go. You know, give them the, as much support and give them as much encouragement as they can in order so they could excel and succeed. So they could, you know, go to college or go to vocational school or get the skills and talents that they need in order to be something. You know, you could be a man of papers, right? You could learn how to turn writing into a craft. You could become a politician. You could be a, a lawyer, you know, learning the laws of society. You could become a police officer. You could become a firefighter. There are so many things that we can do if, as long as we allow the imagination and the creativity to, 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 to flourish. And so, and also, that's, that's absolutely key when it comes to curiosity. When it comes to curiosity, if you are able to get the curiosity of the student, then they will be lifelong learners. That's kind of a hook, right? So, whereas I will not tell anybody what to learn, I will say, hey, these are the things, these are the skills that I can teach and that I can go with. If you don't, if there's nothing that I can teach that you can learn, then what do you want to learn? And we'll work on it together so you can get to where you want to go. You know, and, um, and and vice versa, you know, sort of the, the teachers themselves should have their own type of lives. Their lives isn't just about, you know, I don't know, having someone supportive like that is really important, but also they need to be able to be accomplished themselves. So there's a, the idea with charter schools that I think is really brilliant is by having experts teach the schools instead of people that just went through education, fucking college or whatever, and they think that they know everything because they went, they know how to manipulate a classroom full of students. You don't know shit. You don't know a goddamn thing. You know, just because you taught, you know how to do classroom management, that is, um, that, that's absolutely the fucking worst, okay? So, you know, there's plenty of things that we can do to make school way better. If we truly care about the students, then we can actually, you know, excel and uh, we can have, you know, get to the promised land. We can get to the promised land together. The, I guess what I was thinking sort of about what teachers can do on themselves or for themselves is if they all they want to do because the will to power is normal and natural. And if they have nothing going on, I think that the teachers could be doing things on their own. You know, maybe even have a different job too. You know, have a job at NASA. You want a position at NASA? Well, here's here's a NASA expert. You know, talk to the NASA man. And then he will say, you know, he will get to determine who he thinks is worthy of getting a job. And, um, you know, that's just, that's, that's just genius. It's just smart. But instead of getting the experts, instead of getting the, you know, the people that know the stuff, that know the material the best, um, who's made millions of dollars, who can make Hollywood movies. If you want to be an actor, you know, how are you going to be an actor? Are you going to go to drama? If you go to drama in public schools, you'd be made fun of, right? Hey, queer, you're fag. And then that's, that's how does that get you to anywhere you want to go? All you're doing is incurring the wrath of, you know, the fucking dickheads. So, atom are particles of matter. They're the smallest unit that defines chemical elements and their isotopes. Now, this is a question that I had asked when I was in 10th grade. So, this would be me... You know, um, that was when I was 15. This is me 18 years later finally getting my, my question answered. She needed to manage us, so she dismissed my question, treated me like shit, and then that got the fucking, you know, because I was obedient and did well in fucking class, it just, no, I don't see any fucking good thing that came out of it, frankly. I just think it's all total fucking bullshit. And it's been bullshit pretty much the entire time. There's, um, there's a lot of studies that have come out. Google doesn't hire college graduates. Um, but there's um, a lot of studies that come out that's sitting there saying that you're not, you know, just because you're educated in the traditional schools, you, you don't, you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the capability to be actually to do the things that you need to do. And so the, you know, whereas the idea of education is that it's able to give equal opportunity for pe poor people to be able to do, you know, uh, equal opportunity to do the things that they want to do. Instead of doing that, um, you know, it's it's actually maintaining the inequality.
And so since the, uh, that's, and that might be the fucking point of the school. Shit, the Prussian model was to, you know, just make the masses obedient so that way they'll always listen to the fucking authority figures and never have a good life themselves. You know, put some Christianity on them, fucking tell them there's, you know, they're, they're no good. Nah, don't, don't, you don't want to go too high above your, you know, station in life. And then, you know, the smarter ones who's still obedient, they'll be like doctors and stuff. And make sure they love the state. Make sure they love the great nation of Germany. Germany is the greatest country in the world. So you teach them, you know, love the state, the patriotic, you know, ness of the, uh, the country of the, you know, of that type of shit. So that's, um, the, uh, uh, the, the three tiered system is what we're seeing right now. Instead of actually getting poor people to get up to where they get the good jobs, all they're doing is maintaining their station in life. So you're not doing anything for anybody else. You're not actually uh, making their lives better. You're actually keeping them right where they're at. The best indication if a, a student is going to do well or achieve well is their uh, station of the parent um, in the society. If their parents are wealthy, the kids will be wealthy. If their parents are poor, the kids will be poor. And that just, you know, that doesn't help anybody. What the fuck? You're sitting there wasting 18 years. That kid could have, you know, been starting their own businesses and shit and starting to make money and learning, you know, they could have been learning real science. They could have been actually doing real experiments. They could have been working on so many different things instead of going through the fucking rigmarole just to think that you get a piece of paper and that piece of paper is actually going to do something for you. It doesn't. It doesn't do anything. It maintains the social inequality. And, um, and that's just fucking disgusting. That's absolutely fucking sickening. Atoms are particles of matter. They're the smallest unit that defines chemical elements and their isotopes. Whereas a molecule is an electrically neutral group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. So Sharon Parker, that piece of shit, you know, she was a total asshole about my fucking question, dismissed it. She basically, what's the difference? Well, the difference, Sharon Parker, is that a molecule is an electrically neutral group of two or more atoms held together by a chemical bond. So that means a molecule is several atoms, whereas an atom is just the basic unit, you know? So that's a big fucking distinction. That is a different fucking thing. A molecule is not a goddamn atom. But she didn't care about me. She didn't want me to actually know shit, you know? So it was just she wanted to make sure she had the fucking power and the control. So just shut the fuck up. Molecules are distinguished by ions, by their lack of electrical charge. However, in quantum physics, organic chemistry, biochemistry, the term molecule is used less strictly, also being applied to polyatomic ions. So, you know, I just now, by myself, educated myself. Self-learning is probably the only type of learning, right? So just on my own, I didn't need a goddamn science test or science expert or a so-called science teacher to tell me, you know, the difference between it. In fact, because she just dismissed my question, she said, well, what's the difference? <laughs> I never questioned it. I never, oh, oh well, they, they, I guess they're the same. No, they're not the fucking same, Sharon Parker. You're wrong. Sharon Parker, you're absolutely 100% completely fucking wrong. And, um, and big fucking shocker there, right? Big fucking shocker. Black schools originated under legal uh, segregation in the southern United States after the Civil War and Reconstruction Era. And actually, black schools, once black schools got, you know, gained steam, then white people that didn't have schools was like, what the fuck, you know? We, we want our schools. And so there was two schools, two water fountains, two public restrooms. And now where's all these public works at? It's going up, you know, it's going up to the fucking big fat cats, right? It's going to the industrial complexes. Um, the prisons and the, um, you know, to, to build, have nuclear weapons and to uh, make sure the banks don't, you know, if they get, uh, they fuck over the entire economy all over the world, make sure they get bailed out, right? That's where the fucking money's going now. Not in the schools, not in the healthcare, not into food or, um, you know, actual you know, programs that help people. I think Women's Crisis Center is a lot of good things. There's a lot of social programs. Austerity measures is going to squeeze Americans and they're not going to like it. They're absolutely going to hate it. And in some respects, they, they deserve it, right? When I think about Kentuckians who need their Social Security, who's mostly on welfare and have food stamps and shit, they keep on pretending they, they're so damn racist they fucking vote against their own interest, right? So the chickens hate the black chickens, and so the white chickens vote for a white fucking Colonel Sanders. Nah, nah, I don't think this black chicken will be able to help us chickens out. I think the white, you know, chicken slaughter, he's a good man. Let's vote for the white chicken slaughter. Good, good, smart fucking Kentucky, real smart. And there was actually a Democrat, uh, Paul, something that says, uh, suggested, well, fuck them. Well, they want to keep on, you know, the health care, Obamacare helped most poor people in the South. And so if that was the idea, if that was the fucking plan, right? I mean, basically the asshole fucking Republicans are the ones that got most of the fucking monies and most of the fucking welfare subsidies and shit. 
and the motherfuckers are still racist bastards voting against their own economic self-interest, then fuck them. You know, they're too, too stupid to fucking vote, too stupid to fucking stand up for themselves. And I feel bad, you know, but it's a political thing, right? If, if I have, if I'm running for office and, you know, I had 11 people that supported me, I want the people that supported me to be taken care of. And if I have a bunch of assholes, it's like, no, corporations, big businesses are way better. So fuck you. And they oppose my every, you know, move and everything that I did. No, fuck you. You don't get to get on the dole. You don't get to get any fucking payment. Fuck off. Get the fuck out of my face. You don't get this type of shit. So that's that just makes sense. That's just common sense, really. Um, and, um, and, and I say it sort of in jest because I don't want this bad thing to happen to the American people, but if this is the shit that they're going to fucking choose, they don't want anything better than themselves. Um, but I blame the education system. You know, the education system doesn't teach us our duty to vote, doesn't teach us how we can tolerate other people's perspectives, how we can organize, how solidarity and unity, how we can actually get to, you know, the promised land, how we actually can care about one another and get us to where we need to go. Hard work will get us to where we want to go and resistance and um, standing up for one ourselves and going after what we want. These are good things. Keep your shoulders up. Keep, you know, be proud of yourself. These are good things. And the public education system does not teach us shit. American education system is broken. America is broken. And, um, and you know, I hope that this Eric Garner fucking case actually generates lots of different changes because just the, having a Nazi fascist mentality is going to fuck up our entire society. It's going to fuck it up, you know, and instead of just having, we need artists, you know, we need artists. Uh, Matt Damon says he wouldn't have been who he was if he didn't have teachers that uh, pushed his creativity and tried to make him the best, you know, sort of person that he could be. If all they said was just shut up, sit down, he wouldn't have been who he was. And so that just go down the line. Anybody that had... You know, any type of success had somebody along the way that was kind of pointing things out and helping them out. And if they didn't, you know, then that's even better. That's even like more incredible that they was able to go against all odds against the entire nation. And I mean, Frederick Douglass, I think, is kind of like this. Or maybe some of the comedians, Doug Stanlop or um, Bill Burr. I feel like they could be, you know, the society saying, don't do that, don't do that. And they're against, everything's against them and shit. And then eventually they find this thing where they're really good at and then they just fucking take off in spite of everybody telling them that they ain't no good. So that's, um, you know, there's, there's something genius to that, right? Black schools originated under legal segregation in the southern United States after the American Civil War and Reconstruction era in the southern states. Public policy to keep races separated and maintain white supremacy. In the United States' white opposition to African-American success resulted in the most rudimentary schools for African-Americans as proven by... Gebhardt v. Belton. It often took decades after the South established public schools for systems to offer education at the high school level. Nonetheless, black teachers and students created some outstanding black high schools, including Dunbar High School in Washington, D.C., Dudley High School in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Paul Lawrence Dunbar Jr. in Senior High School in Little Rock, Arkansas. Wikipedia is also a fucking genius. This is like the top five website used all across the nation. And you go to college, and they're like, oh no, Wikipedia is so stupid. You know, even if you say, well, anybody, it, it, try to write a fucking Wikipedia article, okay? Try to fucking write one, and you'll see how rigorous it is. It's so, sort of, it, it sometimes, I don't know, if you get too political, you'll get a lot of fucking opposition to the shit that you're typing. Um, but the, it's a consensus based. So you'll write a brand new article, and then somebody will say, this thing should be deleted. And then they'll vote on it. And then they'll have, you know, 10 people that voted on it. Keep, delete, keep, delete. And then the, that determines whether the page actually gets to go up. There's also people, if you get on there and you change it, then people get on there and change it back if you change something that they didn't like. And so therefore that's, um, that's, uh, you know, that's actually, that's like peer reviewed. That's also like, has more, um, more sort of, uh, you know, uh, um, scrutiny than, than what professors are saying, what teachers are saying. And, um, just as much as, you know, Encyclopedia Britannica, which is being put out of business because of Wikipedia, all this information is available at our fingertips, but we also can create our own content. We can also put up in new information, um, uh, pieces of information. So I think to, to, to laugh about Wikipedia is stupid. Also, another big point about Wikipedia is that they, they are referenced, right? So it says here, outstanding black schools. Here's a one, you click on the one and then it shows exactly you know, R, low, the strange history of school desegregation, rethinking schools. So that's, um, you know, that is a referenced article. So you can find exactly where this information actually came from. And um, and so there's a whole bunch of stuff there. But the, the idea of black schools is that they, uh, it was also freedom schools during the um, um, civil rights movement. And that's where I get the name actually freedom school from. Freedom school comes from the idea, you know, that we... We black folks, I'm going to take the position of black folks, 
that we black folks have a, we live in a white supremacist society, so we have to elevate ourselves at all costs, by any means necessary, right? Um, the same way that they, uh, the teachers in traditional school wants 100% compliance by any means necessary. Cops have all the power by any means necessary. We go to war by any means necessary. And since they want compliance and domination by any means necessary, it would only make sense for anybody who doesn't want to be oppressed for them to stand up by any means necessary to 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 meet the you know you know the oppression with the same um, uh, uh, physical force of of resistance, right? If a rock tries to break a stick and that stick is weak, the stick will break. If a rock is you know going to try to break a stick and the stick is strong, it doesn't break. That's what we need to have students as. We need to have students who are strong sticks who will not break whenever anybody tries to fuck them over. So you know that's that's exactly what we need. So the uh, Freedom School, another big part about it is uh, I mentioned in the uh, you know in the the guiding principles was that it needed. Um, let's see, it's inherently political. It's a transformative education. Learning can be fun and exciting. This actually comes from uh, Bell Hooks, who actually comes out of Christian County, Kentucky. So this is another theorist, educational theorist, that we're not even talking about in the educational programs. You know, it's all about um, uh, uh, B.F. Skinner, right? B.F. Skinner is all about oppression. Let's see what we can force uh, men to do and get them under our thumb and push them and push them and then do whatever. And, um, and really, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's something to being strong and doing things that are hard, but to press on somebody and to think that you're somebody fucking smart because you pressed hard on them, that they actually done something. That's just such fucking bullshit, right? It's like, oh, I'm a fat coach. And I told these damn kids to run back and forth and to do their fucking thing. And, uh, therefore they should do, you know, as I fucking told them to do. And look, I'm such a great boss because I made them fucking run and jump higher. You didn't make them get along. You didn't actually have genuine care about them. And then what? Now they're a bunch of fucking raging psychos. Right? They're a bunch of strong raging psychos who are aggressive. I take the ball. I fucking, you know, um, you know, to do whatever it is I need to do in order to, you know, win the fucking game. And then, um, and then you just let them go out in society and then they have all these fucking issues that they have because the, their, aggression, their aggressiveness was a good thing on, you know, in a regulated field. But then, I don't know, that, I'm going, kind of going off. No, well, on a tangent there, but that's uh, that's that's absolutely true. You know, when you're being forced, B.F. Skinner, he says, let's see what man can make out of man. And the idea is to oppress them, to make them do things that they normally wouldn't do, and then that's how learning will happen, right? If you can force somebody who doesn't want to be a scientist, you force them to be a scientist, then they'll be the best damn scientist ever. That's absolutely bullshit. The key is to capture their curiosity, and then you'll get a lifelong learner. The exact opposite is just as drastic, because if you cannot get them um, uh, curious about the subject, and you're forcing them to do the shit, they won't become awesome. They will hate the fucking field. They will hate all science. They will hate all math, because you made them do it. You made them do it. You didn't convince them why they needed this stuff. You forced them to do it. You put all this oppression on them so that way you can see what man can make out of man. And now they hate the subject and they'll never fucking study it again. You killed your subject. You killed what the thing that you was actually teaching. Now, if you have to convince somebody to join up or to learn a certain fucking topic, if you actually have to convince them to do it, they'll be a lifelong learner. They'll want to learn for the rest of their life. They'll be curious about science. They'll be curious about mathematics. They'll just want to be able to do it. Vocational school, it's also called a trade school. It's a higher level learning institution that specializes in providing students with the vocational education and technical skills they need in order to perform the task of a particular job. Vocational schools are traditionally distinguished from two-year junior colleges. All right, I want to kind of get to um, what types of things we can actually learn. Let's go to the United States, right? So, uh, hell, I'm getting an education because I'm teaching others. I'm getting an education myself. So this is actually really the main reason why I started going to YouTube was so that I could get practice with public speaking. They were not giving me the support that I need. So what the fuck? I'm going to get in front of the fucking, you know, students and shut up. Listen to what I say. And that's why you had at Valley High School. That guy was like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, go tell your parents that I told you to shut the fuck up. I don't care. Well, that's, um, that's, that's what he was expected to do was to oppress the shit out of them. Shut the fuck up and listen to me, you pieces of shit. You know, I'm trying to fucking help you get this fucking test that I was going to oppress you. And how dare you not listen to the massa? Listen to the massa, you dirty, rotten son of a bitch. So there's a very large difference between career and technical college in the United States. Uh, career college. Uh, I guess I wasn't actually trying to look for um, the actual schools. I was wanting to see the types of things that you can learn at a technical college. So there's Breckenridge County. There's just some things just right here. Breckenridge County Area Technology School, Ivy Tech. 
uh, I don't know. These are traditional schools, actually, too. So will they get to, you know, people, uh, uh, get people to learn what it is that they actually need to know? But the um, thing I like about technical schools or trade schools, they say it's a guide to the top trades. Culinary, you can learn how to be a good cook. Business, you can learn how to, you know, do financial forms, healthcare, be doctors, fashion, graphic design. That would be amazing to be able to good, be a good graphic designer, right? The emblematic Obama, that was a graphic designer that created that. Anybody that creates any icons or symbols, that a graphic designer, information technology, cosmopolitan. And these are, you know, lots of different um, things that vocational actually teaches you a trade. And then with that trade, you're able to actually make money out of it. That's Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington. And he's a genius. He was real smart. And, uh, you know, compared to W.E.B. Du Bois, there really is no comparison. But um, Booker T, it's kind of like the Chinese in a way. It's a, if you learn the trade and you're the person that runs the factory, they actually, the mass becomes dependent on their slaves. How are you going to get the shit, you know, how are you going to get a, a building built if you don't know how to do it? You got to hire some builders. Well, if the builders, there's only certain people that can build it, they're the ones that are going to get paid. They're going to get paid a good price. Plumbers make good money. Electricians make good money. And so, you know, if you can learn a trade, that's a transferable skill that you can actually do something with. So, you know, I, I talked about a couple things with trade schools that, that do it. You know, the business, culinary, to be a good cook, so you can, you know, go around cooking really well. Um, healthcare, fashion, and graphic design, information technology. One thing about cook is sort of, um, you know, you'll have a food inspector, so you got to make sure everything's wrapped and refrigerated and, you know, it's be taken care of. There's no cross-contamination. Everything's got to be clean. Um, there's a lot of important stuff that you need. Also, just the, the uh, skill of cooking, right? The, um, it's like that chef. I don't know if people like watching that fucking, you know, Gordon Ramsay, but basically Gordon Ramsay, I don't know, he knows his shit. So if anything, actually Gordon Ramsay is like your traditional educator in that he wants 100% compliance. He's intimidating. He's a total fucking asshole. Um, but he actually knows his shit, right? So there's something to that. If you're convinced that a person is an expert, you know, in that fucking um, skill set, well, that's that you can, you know, submit yourself to that. Um, there's automotive skills, so you can become a mechanic. You can, you know, learn how machines work, how the, you know, the diesel engine or how the, um, um, well, the combustible engine, how that type of stuff works, you know, and, uh, and, and schools that actually care will connect your interest to the jobs. So this, this is trade schools, I think, because you, anything that you can do with the trade, you know, that, that labor that you can do with your hands, you can also do with, you know, science, or you could do with um, men of papers, right? Your W.E.B. Du Bois. If you work hard to learn how to be a carpenter, how to, you know, frame a building, then you can also become an architect. Work hard, learn how to make the designs, learn how to use CAD. CAD is like a program that you could use um, that uh, you can use a computer to be able to design, you know, the, uh, the buildings and the lay of the land. Um, Sim City. I learned a shit ton about, you know, just about uh, how to sort of govern a society under Sim City. You had residential and business and industrial zonings, you know, so you wanted the, the people to live separately from where the pollution was going to be, and so you would plan your city out. There's another, Capitalism 2. I played a game called Capitalism 2, and that was a good learning um, uh, uh, a program for me because you got to learn that w there's some people you want to be able to get into the good industries, right? That's making a bunch of money, but you also want to um, be able to get a hold of the raw materials. Those who have the raw materials can create a monopoly on the thing and charge whatever the fuck they want to charge. So, you know, these um, simulation games are incredible fucking learning tools. So until we can actually acknowledge... You know, just Facebook, scrolling up and down on Facebook, I learned so many different things, so many news pieces that come my way, and um, and I just wonder if people understand that that's reading, that's literacy, you're learning, you know, stuff when you do that, you're learning to type. These are great, you know, that we're going to have a very literate uh, generation, the postmodern uh, internet generation is going to be extraordinarily literate, not because of fucking school systems, but because of fucking Facebook, because of texting, because they actually are expressing themselves, not to the teachers, not to the parents, but to each other. And so we're, we're going to see, I, I hope that this actually turns into something incredible. Healthcare, business, automotive, culinary, art and design schools, media, arts, beauty and cosmetology, and legal and criminal justice. So that's actually f fascinating. A trade school, uh, law school is a trade school, technology schools. Uh, popular programs, uh, medical billing, plimo, plea botonomy, surgical tech, motorcycle mechanic, electrician, auto mechanic, HVAC, right? So for heating and air conditionings, um, they learn how to machine. It's very complicated. If you actually wanted to just know how the furnace works, it's pretty complicated stuff. Just steel. 
just the Bessemer process is pretty, it is complicated material. This is complicated things. And so the, um, just sugar, just the processing of sugar, you know, just takes like so much labor and so much sort of knowledge. And it took a lot of uh, advances in technology to get. And in fact, we don't even use sugar in America. We use mostly high fructose corn syrup. That's what we use in America. We don't even use sugar. So we're using corn. We're somehow taking corn and we're making, you know, a sweet substance out of it. And there's also like a bunch of issues and problems that actually come out of it. Um, massage therapy, event planning, travel, hospitality, vet tech, x-ray, physical therapy. There's dentistry. There's so many motorcycle mechanic, electricians. There's so many fucking things that people can do. And, um, and by just saying shut up, sit and get, we're not allowing them to explore all the fucking options that they actually have. And that's embarrassing. That's fucking bullshit. Because if we want a strong, robust economy, we need to have a strong, robust middle class and people that are capable of doing things. And if we're not doing that, if we're not having a strong, robust, you know, economy and then an education that gets people to learn things, what the fuck are we doing? You know, what the fuck are we doing? And I'm going to take a break actually right now. It's been an hour of me just kind of jibber jabbing. And uh, I'm going to let you know what's coming up. Okay, so there's a... Uh, the other alternative colleges that I consider was Waldorf and St. John's College, Reggio Emilia, the Montessori schools, Summerhill and Sudbury, and um, homeschooling and Khan's Academy. Khan's Academy is absolutely, you know, going in a whole nother direction with all this. And it's incredible. Uh, Sugata Mitra's uh, school in the cloud, he actually believes that education is self-emergent and self-organizing, meaning if you have a computer in a room and you have a bunch of kids and you walk away and the kids respect each other, whatever, you walk away, they will educate themselves, they will learn. The, the teacher is stopping the education from happening, of course that's fucking true. The teacher is the only one getting the education, they're the ones that are teaching others, they retain 90% of the stupid shit that they fucking say and the, the student only retains 5% of the shit that they just heard. And by being obedient slaves, the relationships aren't being built. They're not really learning any fucking material that can advance themselves. They're not learning anything. This is a, um, th these 11 fucking ideas that I'm coming with, people can try to sort of twist them and, you know, make whatever kind of school that they want to make out of these 11 ideas. But these are the guiding principles to the Freedom School, to Jonathan Masters Freedom School. And so Jonathan Masters Freedom School, is it's going to be fucking revolutionary. It's going to be fucking great because, you know, like I said, the, the, it's not just freedom to do whatever you want. That it, it is. It is. It absolutely is freedom to do whatever you want. Um, and uh, it, you have dream classes. You get to, you know, you'll have an advisor and you have people there that will help you get to where you need to go. You have experts in the field that if you want to study the stuff that you want to actually go. But it will also be a... Um, a structure that's in place to where that's it's democratic that you can um, learn how to get along and talk with other people get what you want out of the situation and um, and 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 promote your learning go you know learn in your own direction and you know I think that's incredible if you can get the peers talking about each other well I got this idea and I want to do this thing you know someone could start out though want to be an astronaut seeing like it might be impossible for them to do it and, and go some other direction and that's um and that's totally fine that's totally fine if they you know change their mind. You know, kids are going to do that. They're, they're kind of wild, you know, creatures. Um, they, they, uh, and that's beautiful. I think that's wonderful. Instead of actually criminalizing um, kids for being kids, for being themselves, we can actually uh, advance society to meet kids where they're actually at. So homeschooling, um, you know, there's a, um, there's, there is, you get educated in your home, right? And since social inequality is being maintained by the school system, homeschooling is actually the best type of schooling, right? Your, your parents can teach you, well, the things that they, they know. And since their uh, position in society is going to be the best indication to see where they're actually going to go, that just absolutely makes sense, right? Um, it doesn't make sense for sort of poor students. Uh, but for rich students, that totally makes sense. Khan's Academy, this is where um, there's sort of a flipped inverted classroom. Khan is sort of doing what I'm doing, um, only better, right? He actually shows his uh, face and has better drawings and stuff. I'm just kind of, this is more of a podcast, right? So you can play it and chill out on the on the, on the couch and just kind of listen in. Um, but the uh, Khan's Academy, the reason why it's so beautiful and so, you know, incredible is that he'll have, he teaches math. And so he'll teach how, you know, uh, multiplication or addition 
and he'll he'll show you he'll write on the on the page and you'll see all the you know sort of symbols that he uses and once he's taught that lesson it's out there for the rest of the world to learn and no fucking math teacher ever needs to be used again because you got Khan's Academy so essentially public education is worthless it's bullshit it's outdated it's archaic you could fire every goddamn teacher in a fucking school and just give them Khan's Academy and they will learn you can also have a math box right I don't know if you know about the math box but it's sort of the the uh, students like achieve each level and then they can get to high however level that they want to get so that way you know um, sort of like Khan's Academy you learn at your own pace you learn how quickly that you want to go you're also you know it, it's like fun it's like competitive right so when you're with your um you know your your friends and stuff you can say hey guess what I'm on level 20 or whatever I, I'm learning calculus now and then when we start having those types of conversations when we actually start having those real conversations about what we're learning and respecting each other's learning and having a respectful learning community then we will see you know progress happen there's um self-education independent research projects so that's like not homeschooling it's just self-education sort of this is what I'm doing right this I would say Everything that I have learned that is of any use to me has been because I have learned it myself. Noam Chomsky, I discovered on my own. Um, it was a friend that had showed it to me, and then I just, you know, took off on it. And so Noam Chomsky, the, um, you know, Frederick Douglass, um, you know, there's a uh, Khan's Academy, all the stuff that I'm talking about, Sugata Mitra, it was mentioned, you know, uh, but just kind of in passing. But it wasn't like, hey, Sagata Mitra says that education is self-emergent and self-organized. And you put a computer in the middle of the room and you walk away, learning will happen because those students, those kids will get around. This actually happened. This, this is an actual experiment that happened in Pakistan, I think. Um, he put a computer in a wall and he just filmed it and just walked away. And eventually some dropout, a kid who had dropped out of school, traditional school, started playing with the computer, touching it, doing this, doing that. Other kids came about it. And so they started... Once they figured out, they started playing this really rudimentary math game, and they really loved it. They enjoyed it. So once they sort of learned the stuff on their own, and there's lots of kids, so everybody gets a turn. Everybody gets to play this sort of rudimentary math game, and now they're enjoying some basic math game that would be really hard to force somebody to learn anyways because you allowed them to explore themselves, uh, to, um, to discover the knowledge that they wanted to learn. Uh, because you allowed them that freedom, they were able to you know, um, um, sit there and teach each other math. And more things that happened actually with that the uh, education experience was that the um, um, with the computers they learned you know uh, within a week or two they learned the, how to you know they learned enough English words Google and Gmail they had email accounts and so they were able to actually be computer literate whereas you know if they are in traditional school shut up do as we're told um, they weren't actually learning anything and so this is a brave new world this is a postmodern internet generation and in the postmodern internet generation we do need to you know take a stand and, 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 and progress to sit there and think that some fucking education system that came out of Prussia you know 200 fucking years ago is going to be good enough for us today it's just stupid it's absolute bullshit and if anybody just remembers you know, if education is so fucking worthwhile, how come a lot of these assholes that, you know, get mad about you not listening to the teacher, how come they don't actually go to each other's houses and educate each other? If education, if the way that teachers teach is so fucking important, why don't, you know, the parents or business people actually go to each other places and say, hey, I know this thing, I know this thing, and sit there and educate each other? It doesn't happen because they don't actually respect the education. They just respect the oppression. Shut the fuck up and do as I tell you. And as long as we um, uh, get 100% compliance, we'll never actually get um, you know students who have humanity and that actually want to do anything. So that's um, you know that's that's where we're going. The um, the things that I came up with was the um, oh, St. John's College too. St. John's College is actually has requirements of the great books. They, they're a great books program. Summerhill, Sudbury's Democratic Pure Democracy, Montessori, they sort of have, they have structure, but within the structure, you get to learn what you want to learn. So I think it's good for children um, to sort of, uh, you know, arrange different stations so that way they'll just go and do the things that they want to do, and then that'll be the actual learning. Reggio Emilia, they have some cool things. They have the uh, power of play, I believe, in uh, Reggio Emilia. So where you play, you learn through play. St. John's College has a great books program. So some of these have, you know, it's not just complete freedom, just a bunch of anarchists running wild and shit. And anarchy isn't chaos. I see um, organized chaos. So, you know, whereas they are free to roam about and do as they, as they please, the, the eventual goal is to get them sort of on a pathway to success, to develop a program that is tailor-made for their own specific interest. 
And um, and so they only only had three required courses, right? There was a great books course. I think you can sort of just say, hey, St. John's College taught this, and this is the reason why they're so fucking great. The great books, they made, they compiled a list of 100 of the greatest books ever written in, you know, all of society, and they, they you know, teach you those great books at the St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland, and in um, uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I think there's something really genius about respecting intelligence, respecting the great ideas that have come before us. Um, and just as an introduction, you know, as an introduction to the great books, I think it's just a fucking incredible fucking idea. Um, Robert's Rules of Order, I think this is in, in, in genius too, um, because of, uh, see, Robert's Rules of Order is genius because that way we can learn how to talk to each other in democratic settings and then relationships. I think to learn how to, you know, relationships are hard. Relationships are tough and there's a give and take and really there's a, you know, people have to do the things that they want to do and sometimes you just don't even want to be bothered by it. You know what I mean? So if you have a good hobby and you're into your work, then that's exactly where you want people to be, you know, sort of into the work and producing and making things. But at the same time, they need to, you know, relax, have leisure, learn how to respect each other's ideas, not be total fucking dickholes. Oh, you're so stupid. I'm so smart and you're so stupid. Shut your mouth. You know, I think there is learning can happen sort of that way. But um, I think learning happens from people who um, have have. Uh, you know, similar sort of ideas about how life is supposed to be. So if they believe that the, the you know, child abuse is acceptable and just shut your mouth, kid, because I told you what to fucking do. If they believe that type of shit, then that's, um, you know, that's that's not going to be, that's not going to be uh, compatible with what it is that I'm um, trying to do here. So relationships, instead of one person have 100% of the power and the other one have none of the power, you learn equality. And we actually have a good discussion about what equality is and what it looks like. Respect for one another, but also respect for yourself. If you can't love yourself, you know, how can you help somebody else out if you try to help them and they just fall right back in the fucking ditch? So, you know, that's um, that's something that we're, uh, uh, that the only, those are the only three classes, right? Democracy, great books, and relationships. So I think these would actually be probably collaborative to, sort of groups. These would be the only things that the educators or advisors would really need to know, but on, in addition to their expertise in the field, you know, their trade school or their scientific, their NASA program or whatever the fuck it is that, you know, um, uh, whatever it is, whatever it is. I think that would be incredible to get some real scientists, to get some, you know, real uh, movers and shakers. Get some of these people that build the factories and manufacturing bases and say, look, this is what we expect you to know when you come into the door. You want to get a job at the steel plant? Well, if you don't want to just be some sort of assembly line laborer, well, you're going to need to know how to weld. You're going to need to know how steel is made. You're going to need to know the process of the entire fucking thing. And if you don't know any of that type of shit, don't even fucking come in. Don't even fucking talk to us. We don't even want to fucking hear you. And so when you actually get those people, when you connect the uh, businesses to the school, you know, and actually get the experts who have who have done these things, right? So whereas it's one thing to just worship, you know, sort of your capitalist, your J.P. Morgans and Andrew Carnegie, then actually getting Andrew Carnegie to come to your fucking class and say, hey, this is what we're going to learn. This is what we're going to do. Get Andrew Carnegie actually into the classroom, and then you could see what he is looking for if you want a good job to work with him. And you could also see what it took for him to make his own way. You know, it's a, it's hard to make your own way. And, um, and I have respect for the pioneers. Um, at the same time, I think it's also important for people to know solidarity and unionization and for them to maintain, you know, just because you want to make money, that doesn't mean you are allowed to treat humans like shit. People should have human rights and we can make money. I, that's not, those are not opposing ideas. They do not have to be opposing ideas. So the postmodern revolutionary teacher training school. That would be, uh, they teach each other, respect each other, and this shows that when the adults can respect each other and teach each other, then, um, you know, we'll never get better. Education society will never get better. But when the teachers show respect for each other with the democratic processes, with learning Robert's Rules of Order, when they have good relationships, when they have a basic foundation of, you know, sort of love and respect for one another, by that example, we can show the students how to be. But that's not that's not what you see. That's not what you see in the school. You see, you know, the fucking man, the principal, the superintendent, shut the fuck up and do as the fuck as you're told. So, um, and I was talking about put a mission statement, make sure all these these are principles, right? So eventually, there needs to be some type of constitution, some type of corporation, um, some document that creates, you know, all the fucking things that I'm saying here that incorporates all the best ideas. Because in the great pool of ideas, the best ideas should prevail. 
And so, you know, the, uh, the incorporation papers should have all these ideas inside the Freedom School. So that way, you know, uh, all the students' rights are guaranteed on paper. Also, you know, what's expected of anybody, the teachers and everybody else. Um, and also because we need to be successful. Since we need to be successful, we need people that, you know, you don't want to have sort of a, um, the drive, you know, the drive that capitalism forces people to get in is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. If, if you're cutthroat and you're sitting there making a bunch of people that are poor, that's fucking bad, okay? If you're making people starving out in the streets and you're monopolizing, you own all the property and you fucking pushed everybody out, that, that's good for you. <laughs> it ain't good for nobody else. And, um, and so I think, um, you know, to, to strike that balance is really, is really what uh, the Freedom School is all about. So I'm going to actually do more, um, you know, sort of analysis on each one of these schools, but that's coming up. So... Part one of my, um, I don't know, my blog, my uh, podcast uh, about talking about the Freedom School.